seven and uh, October seven is it's hard to me to say, but well planned operation here in the south. Seven pickups go inside the road. Three thousand people they came to the kibbutz. In six thirty in the morning, we heard the missiles. I heard something different. I heard ta -ta 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 -ta, ta -ta -ta -ta, a machine gun. I heard a machine gun. So I went out from my house. I go up to the roof and I look to the beach. When I look at the beach, I saw I saw a navy ship chasing terrorists. Then the ship launched one missile to the to the terrorist. Uh, Explode and then I saw on the beach two another ships of the terrorists and the terrorists of them that going to the beach. Me and my girlfriend that live with me, Orna, straight ahead to the shelter room and I did my first telephone to the police of uh, Ashkelon and he said to me, his name is Mary, and I said to him, Mary, he said to me, what? I'm in the shelter room, there are rockets. I said to him, go out from the shelter room, there are terrorists that going on the beach in Zikim. We leave the beach, the army is over there, we go to the road. And before we get to the injection, we saw a car from the right, two people are shot. I saw another car with two people also shot, and I saw a jeep was on fire, and, and I was shocked. I saw the pickups, I was so shocked. They went straight to the city, went to the police uh, station. They uh, occupied the police station over there. The resident captured the terrorists approaching the police station. The gunman opened fire on a passing police car. All the police officers make 17 roadblocks around Gaza to keep all the terrorists that come inside in one place in Israel. One resident filmed police defending the station entrance. What happened in the police station? 26 terrorists went to the police station. They attacked the police station. They killed all the police over there. They came from here, all the police officers. Everybody that came here, they were shot here in this place. This one was the killing zone. What happened is uh, all the terrorists were here, so the commander decided uh, only special units will stay here in the swamp. They came here, they charged terrorists, six of them died. So the commissioner decided, said, uh, just a moment, we don't have to kill anybody. So he decided to bring uh, uh, tractors to the collapse of the police station on the terrorists. Workers later demolished the police station in case terrorists were still barricading inside. A telephone for my ex one, New York. He said to me, They have terrorists in Neta, Neta and Kibbutz Faraza. They have terrorists. Faraza? There's no terrorists in Faraza. When I hanged the phone that I saw, I saw a message from Neta, my daughter. Daddy, uh, they are shooting in the kibbutz. Daddy, they are, we have a terrorist. I tried to call her, and she didn't answer to me. I said to her, answer me, answer me. I, text. I get the text from Neta. She said to me, Daddy, they shot me. I'm stuck to run from here to the injection, and I saw a white Hyundai that was working over there. I go inside to the Hyundai and then I saw one of the officers that was working with me 10 years before. His name is Boris Baradi. And he said to me, Portal, I'm coming with you, I'm coming with you. Boris started to move with his car and he had M16, he was sitting and driving. Three Hamas went from the side of the road and started to shoot Boris. <coughs> and shot and killed all the three of them. He's alone, killed them. But he was shot 
a few places here, and it's all one civilian. I said, yeah, take him to the hospital. And I said, yeah, now take him to the hospital. So Boris get hurt. He took him to hospital. They came from four places in Faza. They bombed this gate, seven, ten. They came inside. What they did at the first, they came with motorcycles, with cars. It's not to kill, it's not to take passengers to the other. <laughs> So I went with my car, I drove and I go inside like this. I was holding a gun with my hand, there's no window because of the shut all my windows. So two people are standing next in that house and they were speaking and I said to myself, this kibbutz is looking like crazy, they don't know what happened here. And when they saw me, they wasn't surprised and they wasn't afraid. They saw me and one of them said to me in Hebrew, Bo, I said to him, I'm a police officer. When I said to him, police officer, both to them pick up their weapon. And then I saw him start to shoot at me. Lyoka was with me in the telephone. She said to me, Shimon, you're alive, you're alive, because she heard all the shots. Three young people, I saw them and I said to him, I'm a police officer, come with me and went inside the kibbutz and took to the left. And I said to them, listen to me, you from the left, me and him from the right, and we attacked the terrorists. And when we go from the car, many terrorists shot at us. The two other uh, ran and took shelter here in this point. So I took Eisenthal and I grabbed him. He was shot two here and two here. And I said to them, I'm going back. And I took him. And I went back alone here. And when I came here, I didn't found the two, I didn't found them. And it was very quiet when I get here. And I start to shout, Neta, 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 Neta. No one answered to me. And then they didn't found her. I went back to my car. I see three children that came to my car standing like this. Eight years old, 10 years old. 12 years old. I said, hey, come, 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 come with me. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. When they went to my car, I saw one guy run from the right. I wait for a few minutes, second, then I saw another woman. And they said to me, help me, help me. I opened the other door. They jumped to the car. And I want to close the door of the children. And when I want to come, two terrorists came from here and start to shoot at us so i drive very fast back and i leave the door open i catch the, the girl she has a long hair i hold her in the hair and i drove and we get to the another neighborhood of the kibbutz we stop here stop here we want to go here here they, they went for my car and run and go inside but one of the streets over there <coughs> I saw the three children, they were alive, and the father and the, and the mother and they were so happy for me because almost two weeks I didn't sleep for thinking about them. The father and the mother are the hero of this story, not me. I just took a ride, they, did, they just took a ride with me. What happened is they live in the second house inside. The terrorists went to the, the, their houses, they were in the shelter room. The terrorists start to shoot the shelter room and the father understand that they're going to die, all of them. So he said to the mother, he said to her, listen to me, I open the door, I jump on the terrorist, and you and the children run away from the window. He opened the shelter room, he ran to the terrorist, the tourist was so surprised, so one of them was holding a knife and he pushed them, the two terrorists, and they fought. So he went back to the the shuttle room closed the door and also jumped from the window. And what happened? The creature they were running and they saw the car they went for me and the, the parents saw their children so they ran to the children and then they found me. I 
go back one more time, start to look for Neta and start to, to drive like this and I heard all the shots. Then I get the telephone, I answer the telephone and he said to me, you have to save me. And I said to him, okay, where, where are you? He said to me, I'm with Neta. I'm with Neta uh, uh, under uh, one of the houses. And I said to him, is she alive? And I, and I heard her, she said to me, uh, Derry, Derry, Derry. And I said, I, I'm, coming, I'm coming to you. And uh, I said, she's alive. And she, he said to me, she's shot in the leg. I said to him, stay with me in the phone. I knew, ex I knew where, where he was at that time. So I went back out again. And then when I went out, I saw it's a police arm oh, car. I saw it. I was so happy and I saw and I saw a police officer that said I'm give me the, I'm a police officer, give me the car, I want to go inside. My my daughter is inside. She was shot. I want to go inside. He said to me, I come with you. So we went inside and started to shoot at us and I said they go, hey, where are you? Tell me exactly where are you? He said to me, hey, a grey house. We saw it. So we started to turn the car car, went back to the house. And I went from the car car, I was lying to the under the house. And then I saw Neta. Neta was shot six times on her legs, one in the left hand. I also get back to the car car, but it was, it was too small. So I was holding to, to two doors like this. And I said, Yosef, drive, drive, drive. And he drive and we go out from, from the kibbutz. You know, you come to the emergency room, you think it's, all the doctors going to run to you and we see doctors that are doing CPR on the sidewalk, on the beds that was on, on, outside. One of the doctors came over there, he saw me and said to me, Portal, I need police over there, over there. My daughter is here, she was shot in the leg and nobody take care of her. Uh, he, he went two meters like this, go, go back and he came back and said to me, Portal, take her to the hospital and uh, if you don't take her, you will cut, we will cut her legs. I was sitting like this, I said, what, what, what I'm going to do? And I saw one key of ambulance, and, and I said, who is staff 61? I said to him, yeah, you have to take her to Beth Holim, a man. So he put her in the ambulance, and over there, all the doctors get us, and, and we start to take care of us. I visited Sderot and Kafar Aza with Shimon to hear his story and to bear witness to the atrocities that were committed in those communities on October 7. Shimon's story was one of the few that had even a remotely happy ending, with the miracle that he was able to save his daughter Netta and reunite with her. So many others did everything they could to save their loved ones and could not. What struck me about Shimon's story was not only his bravery, but also his willingness to stop and help everyone along the way who needed it, even though it meant delaying finding his daughter Netta. It was also incredible how willing everyone around him was to help him, even though it meant risking their lives and disobeying army orders. I'm so thankful to have met Shimon and heard his story, and I hope the world recognizes the bravery of this incredible man and of the communities that risked everything to help each other in the face of the unimaginable.